welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons, the Collider weekly podcast for all things animation, including reviews and interviews coming to you all the way from a lighthouse where I'm hanging out with Robert Pattison and Willem Dafoe. I'll be your co-host, Sean Paul Ellis, and joining me all the way from Snug Boat Harbor, Aww. it's my co-host, Dave Trumbor. David, 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 how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. Just snug in my tugs. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> How else are we going to really, be in Snug Boat? Really, I just really thought I'd get through more of this episode no. without laughing at the word tugs. <laughs> We're going to get it and right out of the way. We are right in it, right in those tugs. Right pretty in quickly. those tugs, as this show will be. This is uh, a kid's show, by the way. Yeah, this is, a, this is very much a kid's show. For the show. small a, children out there. <laughs> yeah, just a thirsty kid's show for all those tykes that are just looking to learn more about tugs. I am so confused by most of the things in this show from the reason it was suggested in the first place to everything that happens in the half an hour that we watched to why it exists. I have uh, so well, many questions. <laughs> <laughs> about the third one, the sort of more of the existential question yeah. about this. I don't know that we're ever really going to get no. to that one other than just the answer that I typically have when you ask me, Dave, which is money. Mm, money. Somebody had money and a little bit of time to do a thing. And then this came. We are now <laughs> talking, of course, because with zero context is how we like to throw everybody mm -hmm. into the deep end of this pool. Don't worry. We'll send a to tug after you, fishy out. <laughs> we are going to be talking about Salty's Lighthouse. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. favorite, Salty's Lighthouse. Yeah. Salty's Lighthouse. If you don't know, Salty's Lighthouse. Oh, uh, guess what? I didn't know. Dave, did you know nope, about this? Nope. 100%. Nope. I, I had zero idea, which I can now help you, Dave, because you had two out of the other three questions that we actually can answer. Oh, yeah? Why was this recommended to us? And what is actually in this show? <laughs> to help us with the first question, I can tell you straight up that this happened because of money. No, money. I'm kidding. <laughs> now, this is actually coming as a part of a listener suggestion. Yeah. So we had a listener who called in and said, we would like you guys to watch Salty's Lighthouse. And because of our cartoon lawyers... Ugh, the worst. Always breathing down our necks. Really want us to be able to review all this. Which is really footage. kind of like socially unacceptable these days, guys. Yeah. So we had a listener. His name is Kevin. He called in and he recommended Salty's Lighthouse, uh, aka Tugs. So let's hear from Kevin in his own words. So right now, Kevin, take it away. Hey, Sean Paul. This is Kevin, and I wanted you to review the cartoon Salty's Lighthouse, S-A-L-T-Y apostrophe S, Lighthouse. That is actually a British show called Tugs. When they brought it over to American audiences, they added in an extra segment called Salty's Lighthouse. It's a show I watched growing up on a now defunct programming block called Ready, Set, Learn on what was then called the Learning Channel. Can't wait. Kevin, thank you for using my full first and middle name. I'm sure. Now, I have a question about that. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot ahead. of questions about this show, why Kevin put us through this, uh, a lot of those things. I've <laughs> oh, never God. in the, what, 15, 17 years that I've known you? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. That's depressing. In the 17 years that I've known you, I've never depressing. I've known you for like half my life. I know. Well, is that not depressing to you? It's not depressing. Oh, no, that's great. What a celebration. Uh, I've oh, never boy. thought of calling you Sean Paul. Really? I've never thought of it. Huh. I just, I had a lot of, uh, I've had a lot of people who have either called me Sean Paul or Sean Paul Ellis or SPE, just the abbreviation of all my initials. And we used to say SPE. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because we're uh, lazy. Yeah. Right. Uh, Sean Paul, surprise, surprise, anybody listen to this, I am not a regular superstar. Even if I was, though, I would still do this podcast. <laughs> well, that would I be appreciate real, that. That'd be real cool uh, of me as Sean Paul. I'm not going to try to do a reggae Please don't. anything because nobody wants to hear that. Uh, yep, it's terrible. And if you want, go back and listen to Tailspin, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> However, you're also not a British director of uh, feature films. Is that correct? Yeah, and the, there's another guy named Sean Ellis who is a UK director and I want to say about maybe once a year, I get a message over social media from somebody thinking that I am Sean Ellis because it's spelled the same way. And they are asking me for advice about film stuff. And I, I, I put a pretty quick kibosh on it now, but there was definitely the first time it happened. And I had seen the film that they asked me about, yeah. which is called Cashback, which I think is a very fun film. 
I really enjoyed it. Uh, I acted for maybe like two or three messages as if I was UK director Sean Ellis before finally just breaking it down and being like, full disclosure, buddy, I'm really sorry if you thought that this was like going to lead to something or if it was going in a direction, but I am not the person you think I am right now. <sighs> and that's how we ended up signing contracts with cartoon lawyers. So yeah. there you go. That's the backstory of how this all came to be. Man, guess what the backstory is about Kevin? I have no idea. Kevin. But if you want to know how Kevin made him recommend this cartoon, <laughs> uh, a lot of you that are listeners have recommended cartoons. In fact, since going back and doing all these listener recommendations and at the requests of our lawyers, people have been calling in and you guys have been great about leaving us messages. We really love it. When you leave it in social media or in a comment section, it can get lost. So if you want to recommend a cartoon to us, just go to the bio in any of our social media accounts, click the link tree. There's a button that says submit a suggestion, or you can actually go one step further like Kevin did, and you can call our cartoon hotline, 202-681-4406. Don't worry. It's in the show notes. Put the pen down. You're fine. Well, you're driving anyway. Just Please. be responsible. Yeah. If you call the number 202-681-4406, this ensures that you get the proper shout out. And that is extremely important because we want to give you the credit in the same way that we gave Kevin credit and included him as a part of the show. Our cartoon lawyers say we have to review. We have to review every single one of your listener suggestions. So if we haven't reviewed your cartoon yet and you tell us to review it, our two lawyers are going to make us do it every single time. So we le we're legally bound. The good thing is I can be mad at those cartoon lawyers and not Kevin, which is right. good for Kevin this week. Yeah. I'm not upset at Kevin in any way, shape, or form, but I am upset about all the legal process, also sponsored by DocuSign. <laughs> I would like to know, Kevin, what we did to upset you, though, that you made us watch this show. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Kevin... This was an instrumental cartoon, and Kevin probably watched this. You know, maybe it's its first or second broadcast back in like '97. Uh, who knows? You know, this this kind of fell out of the demo that I would have watched cartoons Same. during that period of time. Yeah. I was probably when this came out. I was I was leaving for college. Yeah, we were high school, college age at this point. Yeah, yeah. right. So I was discovering Cartoon Network, which I didn't have in Central Pennsylvania, but in Western Pennsylvania. I could watch all the Dragon Ball Z and watch the Frieza saga at least four times before new episodes were dubbed and then I could continue <laughs> on with the show. And in between those episodes, you could watch Salty's Lighthouse. Yep. Should have. Should did you I? have? Did not. Well, I that's why not. we're here to I talk about today, I guess. But exactly. what, what is this thing even about? Dude, I uh, we're going to try to figure that one out. Okay. That's your that's the that's, that's the our task third tonight. of your three questions nice. that we're hopefully going to get to at this point. I mean, it was your second question. We'll, we'll figure it out. But... To figure out a little bit more about the actual synopsis of the show, we're going to turn this over to a longtime friend and listener of the show. He is our buddy, Bobby Anthem. Bobby's going to break it down. So, Bobby, take it away for us. Take it away from us. <laughs> Salty's Lighthouse is a television series for young children created by Nina Ihan and produced by Sunbow Entertainment. It aired on the TLC network during Ready, Set, Learn from 1997 till 1998. The show centered on a young boy named Salty as he played and learned with his friends in a magical lighthouse. In addition to the animated adventures of Salty and his friends, the series used live-action footage from the British children's television series Tugs for various sequences. The Salty Song segment featured original songs set to a montage of black-and-white footage edited together from stock libraries and silent films. Dave, I want to say incredibly salty of you just to say that bobby should just take this away from I'd us. i'd be fine with bobby just taking over this episode if he came into the <laughs> studio now cartoon lawyers or not i would just say this one's all yours but is now a good time to tell you that bobby is our cartoon lawyer? oh no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well now i can't get mad at them or kevin so you're the only one left so i yeah, apologize I if i get can't salty get, can, from now on i get, can never get mad or angry at anything bobby you can't does, get mad at so. bobby yeah. Awesome. What would his character be in this show, Salty's Lighthouse slash Tugs? Uh, he would be the lighthouse. He would be a cool lighthouse. A cool breeze across the top yeah. of a lighthouse. Because everything else is uh, like has some weird human yeah. anthropomorphized personification. The lighthouse does too regard. in the theme song, but we right. never see it again. <laughs> and that's what I want. Okay. I want Bobby as that lighthouse. I like that. Just saying like, what's up, gang? And I'd be like, perfect. 
That'd be great. Imagine just waking up in the morning, sun streaming in, and Bobby's just like, what's up, gang? That's that's all I want. That's all I ever want. That's a so, nice one. Bobby, morning. make this happen, please. Yeah. <sighs> well, let's get in. <laughs> to since the we're lighthouse. both Yeah, let's get into the lighthouse. Yeah. We're both salty enough. So to get into this for today's episode, we're gonna talk about the good, the bad, and the LOL. Does it sound like a Clint Eastwood spaghetti western? It does. You bet your butt. It does. Because that's what we're ripping it off from. So we are actually going to talk about the good. What is good about the show? What we enjoyed? What we found uh, really enjoyable? But then we're going to get into some of the bad. We're going to talk about the things that maybe didn't necessarily register with us. They didn't resonate. Uh, We're just not fans about it. We'll we'll talk about it. And then the LOL is the things that either intentionally or unintentionally made us laugh. We just also want to kind of pause and just say that we know that a lot of time, energy, and money goes into making these cartoons. We get it. But look, we are reviewing a cartoon based off of a snap decision, which is only one episode. And so if you have another episode that you think would be a contender to get us to go back and actually rewatch a particular program, Good luck. do it. Do it. I dare you. Good luck, Our Kevin. Our lawyers are going to make us do it. Yeah, good, Kevin. Just, I feel like we're blaming Kevin on this, and we should not be blaming Kevin. No, Kevin's great. Kevin did exactly Kevin's what great. we asked him to do, and he introduced yeah. us to this thing that we're going to talk about for the next half hour. So. <laughs> so because there is not a highest rated episode of Salty's Lighthouse right. on IMDb, we're just going to go in on the first ep. We're going to hit that first episode. That has two pieces of it, yep. which is Mixed Signals and Let's Party. Yeah. And those are really the two animated portions. Then there's a bunch of Tugs footage. Oh, that they boy. Have we will get into all that nonsense. And then there's just a bunch of old stock footage yep. that they have that are kind of spliced in there as well. Stay which tuned, are just, kids. Yeah, stay tuned. I don't know where this is going to go. This is very weird. Take your riddle in if you got it. You might need it for this one. I feel like there should just be like a flashing lights may cause yeah. seizure seizures warning. disorientation. Yeah at some point for this because there's there's a lot going on which here. is a hell of a thing in an audio podcast but yeah right. here it comes <laughs> right. yeah do not get listen ready to this episode while driving or operating heavy machinery our cartoon lawyers make us say this <laughs> so that's our full disclaimer oh i feel like we've blamed everybody i feel like if someone listened this. to this through like a win amp uh visualizer it may have to come with <laughs> one of those like she's seizure warnings <laughs> who's is this, can you get one? I hope there's anymore? one person out there who is doing this on a weekly basis because I love you. Kevin, if it's you, double bonus to you, bud. Also, if you're listening on Winamp, just message me on social media. I'll send you a bunch of SMC stickers. That'd be like great. This. Yeah, why not? Perfect. Done. They're yours, bud. Oh, so, talking about the good for Salty's Lighthouse. God. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'll I'll start. You want to jump in? Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've got uh, stuff. I know you. I'm, I'm, we both have stuff. Yeah. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the characters. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think some of the characters that they have here are kind of endearing. They're kind of fun. Hmm. Um, Which is good you know, for we, a kid's show. It, it, it's a rare move to make in a kid's show to have characters that you absolutely loathe. Right. So I guess that's a good start. I mean, we have Claude, who is a <laughs> crab friend, and I enjoyed him. I thought he was. I thought he was interesting. Sure. You know. Nothing, nothing terrible about him. We've got a series of clams, mm-hmm. a bunch of clams. What's a group of clams want. called? Is it like a? I want like, you to guess, like, and then I want you to look it up because I don't. Uh, know. It, oh, it, <laughs> I, I hope it's a series. Oh, I think it's just. Is it? I think it's just called clams. I don't think there's there got to like be a, a group. It's got to be. I hope it's a chowder. <laughs> I hope it's a chowder. Are you serious? I don't know what it is. Oh my god! Do you, do you, you, it's actually collectively known as a bed. Oh, that's kind of boring. A B-E-D, but it's cute. a bed of clams. Okay, all right. That's kind of fun. I allow it. Chowder would have been better. Clowder of cats, See, chowder of clams. It's fine. See, we're talking about a kid's show, yeah. and there are some lessons that we're going to talk about that I think we learned for this episode, mm. and we just learned something else. A bed of clams. Bed of clams, everybody. Yeah. Now from now on, anytime I go to like a place where I can get clams, I'm going to be like, I want a whole bed. One bed, and, please. Yeah, one bed <laughs> of clams, please. Uh, I think that these characters are very enjoyable you know we've we've got a we've got two female seagulls sophie and sadie uh, that we'll get into a little bit later and then you know we have uh, an ant we have an ant that is in here which is named ant chovy and i like a good wordplay every once in a while i found it enjoyable now we should mention since we've said uh, crabs clams seagulls and ant the ant 
is a human. Uh, right. She's not an she's an aunt. Some might say aunt aunt Chovy, but then the joke is ruined. But just to let you know, she's not like a little insect crawling ant. She's a human who is aunt Chovy. Right. I I love her character. I love her presence, and it, it seems like even from just the the intro. That there's, she kind of brings maybe like a magical element, something to some of the stuff that she's she like has. a, she's, she's a like a like Miss Frizzle, Frizzle for this exactly, perfect. perfect. Yes, I agree, and so I, I feel like there's a lot of fun. She is, I feel, a kid at heart, yeah. and like contributes and plays into a lot of the imagination for the character Salty. Now, I'm gonna, I'll talk about Salty later. Uh, <laughs> Who needs to talk about the the title yeah. character of this show? Yeah. Well, that's a point that I want to bring up same. in a little bit. Same. But I want to bring up a character that I think that we both really like yeah? a lot. Yeah. Uh, his name is Seymour. I love Seymour. Right. Tell Seymour me Seymour is about unironically Seymour. probably my favorite part of this entire show. I'm I'm not joking around either. He's amazing. He's, Seymour's amazing. He doesn't speak, but right. he, he pretty much moves the plot along necessarily throughout every episode that we've seen, which is one. He's the only character doing any work. <laughs> he's, he's doing, doing work. all the He's doing all the heavy tugging. Yep. In here, and that's it. It's crazy. It's just Seymour. So yeah. Seymour, much like Aunt Chovy, who Sean and I disagree with uh, already on Aunt Chovy, but we both love Seymour. Seymour is a pair of walking binoculars. Right. So there's your joke, Seymour. <laughs> Except I think they do spell his name like S E Y M O U R, which is a missed opportunity, but that's fine. I yeah, love. They do. I do love Seymour though. Uh, but I mean, like you know, it's a it's a homophone. Sure, one of those things. Yeah, one of those I mean, Jeopardy categories. To- Similar to the fact that, like, morning that we have in the title of our show, people are just like, you spelled morning spelled wrong. Morning and like, wrong. no, it's actually, it's a homophone. Don't, oh, I'll explain we'll it We'll send you a sticker. It's, Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a play on words. You're fine. But no, Seymour's, I, I, <laughs> Seymour's great. <laughs> to bring back to, like, one of the few positive things in this show. <laughs> Seymour's great. He doesn't speak, but he moves the action along because it transitions from the sort of traditionally hand-drawn animated hijinks that take place in this lighthouse with Salty and his animal friends and Aunt Chovy. And it transitions it out the window into the harbor, Snugboat Harbor, uh, down the way. So we actually transition into a completely different style of animation, which isn't really even animation at all. It's just live action with uh, small miniaturized boat puppets. It's just tugboat puppets. If you've ever seen Thomas (laughs) the Tank Engine, you should have a horrifying image uh, in your mind right now of a normal looking train engine with a horrific gray face on the front of it. Right. Basically the same thing for these tugboats. Uh, just boats with faces. Boats with yeah. human faces. Just bo- and, they, and they are emoting. Yep. And there are moments when they try to look kind of back and forth. Sometimes they have a monocle. Yep. Sometimes it's an old grandpa who's been around for 50 years. Well, I do want to talk about, again, some of these characters that they have The here. characters are There's fun. A- there's a character that they have that's a part of this in sort of the the tugs section yeah. that they have, and his name is Lord Stinker. Lord Stinker. Come on. <laughs> Lord Stinker is there for like one or two bit jokes, but I love. I don't care. I love, I love Grampus him. though. Yeah, Grampus is fantastic. Grampus he is, is an great. old submarine. He's right? a freak, and I love him. <laughs> he plays practical jokes. He is not shy. We'll talk about that later, and he gets stuff done. I feel like the practical jokes are under the LOL. So everything's a pin everything with yeah. Grampus is under the LOL. Everything. But I love him. And if you go to my Twitter, you will see a GIF featuring yep. both of those characters, Grampus and Lord Stinkerton. What was his name? <laughs> Lord, <laughs> Lord. I wanted to be Lord Stinkerton. So much better. Lord Stinker. Mm. Yeah, Stinkerton is great. Yeah, That's Stinkerton's perfect. his family name. A follow up to that Weezer album, Pinkerton. Yeah, exactly. Stinkerton. Yeah, just Lord Stinkerton. Yeah. yeah, which has been a lot of their catalog. So let's dig into some of the other things that you found good yeah. about this. Uh, we can kind of hodgepodge, mix signal, and let's party kind of together these these two specific vignettes. So anything that you found that you really enjoyed, Dave? Well, yeah, one that's easy to kind of uh, mush together is the theme song. I actually, I didn't mind the theme song on some levels. We'll talk in the okay. bad about why it didn't work for some other levels. But the energy sure. of this thing is really, really good to start out with. This the visuals feature, you know, very kind of like energetic music. You very quickly get the idea that this is a kid show, which is fine. The kid, Salty, just pops up out of bed and he just like gets started with his day. And this kid has more energy than I've probably ever had in my entire life. So I like that. Really? I like how Yeah. He was just like ready to go, man. He's up and out of bed. My mom had to come in every morning, flip the lights, didn't matter how old I was, didn't matter if it was Christmas morning. Like I always just wanted to sleep. Just leave me alone, okay. let me sleep. Plus, I didn't live in a lighthouse, so, I mean, that was a lot of fun. Uh, 
I love the energy of the song. I love the early visuals and the premise. I like the idea that this kid lives in a lighthouse. That's kind of cool. And he gets to hang out with animal friends and some maybe sort of imaginary friends and has different adventures there. And it also kind of felt like early SpongeBob. The theme song felt like early SpongeBob, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was some some weird connective tissue uh, between the two uh, theme songs, at least if not the shows themselves. But that was that was about it as far as uh, theme song stuff. Did you have any thoughts on that in the good section? I had a bunch of th- like I, I I concur with you a lot about the theme song. You know, I think it was fun. I had like a little bit of like a sea shanty kind of feel yeah, a little to bit, it, which it, I think plays like into SpongeBob. your SpongeBob. Yeah, yeah. I found it very interesting that. Salty runs past his parents and you don't see his parents' face. I had a question about that because I didn't know yeah, they if... they don't have faces. <laughs> it's like Muppets, right? Or Muppet <laughs> yeah. Babies, rather. Yeah, Muppet Babies. But Aunt Chovy is presumably a human, I guess. Yeah, but I... Again, <laughs> and she's, I think, like, you if, see her I totally. think if you're a kid at heart, yeah. you get, like, a face. But if you're, like, an actual, like, quote-unquote parent... You're only, just, like, like, legs down, of, that's it. They're like, return the face, buddy. Return, bring your face back. You're grown bring up. your face. You're done. This is what happens, kids. This is why we do the podcast, to stay young at heart so we can keep our faces. They're not keep great faces. faces. That's why we do an audio podcast only. <laughs> but they are ours. And we'd we like to keep them. Like. Yeah. <laughs> but I... I I thought that was interesting too. They only, you could only see him from like the torso down. One was washing dishes. One was like tinkering on like a cuckoo clock or an alarm clock or something like that. And I didn't know if one of them was supposed to be Aunt Chovy or not because they go by so quickly. But it was an interesting kind of like, I don't know what the rules of this universe are. Are they imaginary friends? Uh, do adults get to keep their faces or not? Is there going to be like a larger Rugrat style conspiracy theory that's behind this? I just made a connection. Did you? When adults lose their faces, they go to the boats. Uh, that's why boats have faces. Oh, God. That's oh, terrible. Oh, oh, oh. Stay young at heart, listeners. If not, Otherwise, the boats will take a, your face. Get that boat face out of here. And you're going to be Boaty McBoat face. Boaty McBoat. I wish I was kidding about this, but it's All the way it. of yeah, the world. No, this, is, this is how this, this is the lore that this is the show has created. I will say, good section, theme song. Yeah. Uh, I I did, you know, this was a hybrid. We had what looked like a little bit of dedicated animation as well as also some recycled episode animation. It's very fun. It's enjoyable. I loved the fact that there were a couple lines, because you're right, it's very catchy. It's a little bit of an earworm. There are a couple lyrics that they throw in here that are said by one person, and then there's like one word that's said kind of by a group to kind of emphasize uh, what they're kind of talking about and it's like uh you know when they're talking about like salty's lighthouse they're just like all of our friends are there hooray and you know and, and that i don't know it was just energetic it's it was cute. very yeah it's fun it's a kid's it's a kid's intro it reminds me of like like what was it gala gala island where it's like it's sure. very much a kid's show and like everybody's here to just kind of like have fun and just hang out together and just have a good time Eureka's Castle, like any of those kinds of like classic younger skewing demos with a theme song where it's like just a bunch of people coming in and everybody having a good time. Yeah. Now, I want to ask, because I think maybe you had some questions about this when I brought up like morals of the story. Yeah. Because I want to come back to the theme song because there were a couple bad things about the theme song as well. And but I don't want to transition yet because I wanted to ask you, I felt that there were some good themes morals ideas that they kind of posited in here i think one of them was a little bit more pronounced one of them was a little bit hidden and i wanted to kind of get your take on these like for mixed signals what did you think sort of the takeaway message was uh you know what i think i'm i'm gonna pass the buck to you for what you liked about the morals of these shows because i thought they were kind of lacking and i have specific reasons why which i think i'll talk about in the next section all right all right so what worked for you with these like kids stories and their morals. <laughs> well, I, I think for, I think for uh, mixed signals, the, the first animated vignette, it, it's talking about the idea of uh, like, you need to keep trying at something. We're looking at uh, Sophie and Sadie and they're, they're attempting to, to fly. And uh, this is the moment where, you know, they, they don't know that they need to flap their wings. Like they're, they're two seagulls and they're trying to figure out how to fly it's not, you know, I, I thought the whole nature thing would kind of kick in. It didn't. It's it's okay. So what happens when you grow up in a lighthouse and not like yeah. outside on the ocean air. Fair point. Listeners yeah, fair at point. home, just so you know, and you can have a little visual, Sean was 
flapping his chicken wings while he was talking about that. So you got it. You do, gotta do, do it. that along with us and let us know if any of you take off. So I felt like this kind of transitioned into the the first tugs section that they had here. And I felt like the takeaway that then came back to the end of the mixed signals segment was you got to ask for help. Sure. Like there's nothing wrong with asking for help. That's fair. Like it's, you you know, and I, I, I'll say this as a part of my own personal life, it's sometimes very difficult to ask for help. And I sometimes don't slow down enough to be able to like throw it out there and communicate it clearly and effectively. I get that. I've been working on this for 40 years. I'll work on it for another 40. It's a with or without a face. Yeah. With or without a boat face. (laughs) But I, I thought that, you know, walking away from it, I saw that, you know, Things can be difficult, and sometimes you just got to ask for help. Well, let me ask so. you to help me with this then. What yeah. was the moral of let's party? Sure. Let's party. Patience is a virtue. Okay. That, that's pretty much what I was going to say. So All cool. Right. I'm so, glad that Sean and myself picked up on the moral stories meant for five-year-old children. I, I think maybe for kids, it would have been a little bit difficult. Yeah. I did enjoy the fact that in Let's Party, they have an entire song about like why it's a pain in the butt to wait for stuff, and... <laughs> There's a part of me that is beginning to think maybe I'm going to start singing that song because guess what? This is, we live in a world, well, we used to live in a world where (laughs) we could order stuff and then like the next day Amazon would drop it off at your house or, you know, you could go out and you have access to a lot of different things. I'm, I'm in a very fortunate position where, you know, I live in a pretty major metropolitan area. There, there are things that are in close proximity to me, you know, and I I can, I can go and I can do those things. And so uh, I feel like culturally sometimes we're also in that mindset where like, you know, the the overnight delivery or the the immediate access to something or I download a video game and I can start playing it right away. Instant gratification. Yeah. Thank you. And so I think patience still is a virtue. Uh, <laughs> I went through that recently uh, as a little side story. Uh, Animal Crossing <laughs> came mm. out recently for the Switch and my copy got delayed. And so I tried to cancel it. And because Am- Amazon had pushed the delivery date like almost a week beyond when it was scheduled to to arrive, and I tried to cancel it, and they were just like, "Nope, you can't do it. Sorry." <laughs> so, because it was a gift for a friend and wife of the show, Melanie mm. Harker, I just Did you hear that, and- listeners, wife of the show. You are yeah. all married to Melanie. No, <laughs> Do- I'm not docu signing that. Cartoon uh, lawyer signs off. Nope. So. <laughs> I ended up just buying, I had already bought a physical copy, but I just bought a digital copy for her. And yeah. then I just sent the Amazon copy back when it arrived like five days later. So, uh, but yeah, that like instant gratification, I, like I feel it. So to have a little reminder in a kid's show that patience is a virtue, I think it goes a long way for me. Cause again, you know, I felt like both of these messages from this episode very targeted very poignant in my life and i was like maybe i should maybe i should pay a little bit more attention to what this show's saying you know what's interesting about that is i've long felt that uh kids shows especially the younger skewing kind of kid shows mm. once you get especially once you're a teenager younger adult whatever you kind of like just write these off i feel like a lot of people could do very well by going back and visiting these kind of basic yeah. principles of what it means to be a functioning human being in a society <laughs> like these things are meant to teach kids kind of like just basics how to how to behave how to you know be polite be courteous be respectful of other people to be patient to be thankful to be open enough to be able to ask for help if you need it i love these things but we for whatever reason we watch them as kids and then you, they either get internalized or they don't and then you just move on with your <laughs> life and i really think a lot of people you know i don't care how old you are could do with watching shows like this and just getting a refresher and just being reminded of just like, oh yeah, no, that's, that's still a good idea and a good thing to be, even though I don't have a face and my face belongs to a boat. I should still be a respectful (laughs) human being. Yeah. I could still be a nice boat human. There's nothing wrong with that. You gotta be both. Also, quick question. If I get a boat face, do I have to then wear boat shoes? Is that like a mandatory thing? The great thing about being a boat face, you don't need shoes at all anymore. Oh, perfect. Easy. Yeah. Very you easy. just need constant applications of waterproof sealant. <laughs> so it's kind of a trade off, but it's not bad. It's not terrible. It's not terrible. I think we're ready to get into the bad. Uh, I've got a, just a couple of quick minor things. There was one oh other my God, character no, I, then I'm I, wrong. I liked <laughs> whose name was Zebedee, but they just kept calling him ZB because I guess that was easier. Yeah. Uh, I, he kind of had a, a can do attitude. 
that definitely flew in the face of the moral of this uh, episode, but I he liked was it the anyway. The moral existed. <laughs> yeah, exactly, is the whole reason for it. Yeah. But I liked his attitude to begin with. He's definitely like a harbor dude. He's getting stuff done. I like <laughs> Zebedee. Uh, I also like the fact that they had multiple um, visual styles. I like that they had the traditional hand drawn animation, and then that they went to this weird kind of Thomas the Tanky live action, but not weird overdubbed uh, boat face shorts. Right. I, I like the idea of it, and we will talk later about whether or not that execution worked. <laughs> and then I, uh, that was probably about it. I like Grampus, but we already talked about him, so I'm, I'm good to get into the other stuff now. I had one line from Zebedee. He just yeah. goes, uh, I know I can do lots of things. I just need a chance to prove it. I was yeah. like, okay. Yeah, sure. It's like, great, Rocky. Yeah, why Go not? for it. That like, you're sense. the best. Yeah. yeah. So I was I pulling hope- for Zebedee. Hope you do it, Zebedee. Old yeah. ZB. Good job, ZB. He got a chance uh, to redeem himself, too, at the end, which he, was nice. He did. He did. So that was nice. I want to transition to the bad yeah. regarding the theme song. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'll say the one thing, uh, two very quick things. The repetition of them just going like Salty's Lighthouse over and over and over again yeah. plays into my second point, is that mm. this is almost a 70-second long theme song much like this episode yeah a little too long it a little too long overstayed its welcome it could have been 30 seconds and it probably would have been great it's like spongebob learned all the best things to do and not to do from this theme song it just made it better it's like when the little like tin whistle happens at the end of the spongebob theme song if then SpongeBob was like, "Hey, guess what? There's another 30 minutes." You're of this. halfway there, like, kids. Wait, what? This is yeah. the theme song. He's like, "No, buckle up." Hey, <laughs> you're like, oh, "I don't." Are you ready? <laughs> no, I don't want. <laughs> We're to going there. again. I'm done. <laughs> Anything else about the theme song uh, before we kind of transition to the specific episodes and the things that didn't register? Yeah, for for, from what I re- recall, it was only the traditionally animated parts that showed up in the theme song. So Correct. if you watched the theme song by itself, you'd be like, oh, that's what this entire cartoon is about. It definitely doesn't feature live action, weird miniature boat face things. And it also doesn't feature archival footage from the silent film era for whatever reason. Oh, nope. Uh, <laughs> so it's kind of like not bait and switch really, but it's only showing you a portion of what you're getting in the in the show itself. Right. Along the lines of the theme song, Dave, yeah. I'll say the thing that really was a little bit challenging is that this show is called what? Salty's Lighthouse. And Salty doesn't never even show Never to up. be seen. Is it, whoa. <laughs> in the first never to be seen again. Well, he's like, he's he's in, you know, the entirety of the theme song. He's, and he's the main this, focus, yeah. Right. This first vignette that they have for mixed signals he doesn't even show up until almost 10 and a half minutes into the episode itself he's just playing checkers in the background right and he's not mentioned he's got like a real quick line where he's like what's that and that's it he sets it up like what are you two doing that's it no longer part of the conversation gonna go play checkers with an octopus in the corner here i like I, I get it. it. It's fine. But for the titular character, you would think that you would maybe spend a little bit more time in that first episode. It's weird. I don't know them. why I keep going back to this, but it's like going back to Eureka's castle where it's like not everything focused on Eureka, but she was kind of the central point of the the castle, the setting, like everything else kind of hmm. spiraled out from around her. So, yeah, you spend time with like the moat creatures and the giant and the dragon and all that. But most of the stories still actually featured your title character sooner than halfway through the episode in your right. first episode yeah in your first episode and i yeah. get i get it that maybe just maybe for like mixed signal they were like look asking for help really it's the only reason this episode got made in the first place we <laughs> asked for help from other people from producers animators tugs everybody came together to be able to put this together so we really got to prominently feature this but to not include salty seems like a huge disservice well and let's let's talk about that real briefly because it's not just salty's lighthouse this animated thing from sunbow productions who it wasn't like they were just cobbled together for this show they'd been around for you know two decades at least before this i don't know why they did things the way that they did i don't know why they took the live sick se- the segments from tugs and then just redubbed them and kind of crammed them into a new narrative I don't know why they had those original songs with black and white footage from old public domain movies <laughs> playing over it. There's a lot of really strange questions that I have here, but I'm assuming it's to kind of like stretch the budget 
and stretch kind of suspension of disbelief in how they could try to wrangle all three of those separate things and, and make a, a narrative that makes sense, like asking for help. You would think that you would have Salty asking for help for something. Right. Mm, no. But he doesn't. Yeah. No, not no. at all. You just have two fledgling seagulls trying to fly and everybody's just kind of like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? <laughs> Why aren't you better at this? It's hard because it's very. Let's go trans- watch the tugboats instead. It was yeah, such a weird. It's it's the the whiplash. dialogue for this is very transactional. Yeah, you know where it's like, what's up? Trying to fly. Why don't you do it? Because I can't. How come? I, I just I don't I don't know. We don't know. Oh well, you're doing it wrong. Great. Let Thanks. me tell you how to let me tell you how to do it. But then no. please no don't I want to figure it out for myself. Which I understand that I understand that makes that. Sense. that makes sense to me. Sure. But everything up to that point. <laughs> Is just like, oh my God, it nails on a chalkboard in terms yeah. of how it's written. So. And then I love the idea of like, well, if the kids are, are not quite getting the moral, how are we going to help them do it? We're going to cut to a scene in a harbor with a bunch of human face tugboats. <laughs> <laughs> that are just going to try to like convey the message. And again, like I got the moral, you sure. know, I, I, I it checks out for me. So I don't think that that, I, didn't, I wasn't upset about that. It was just, I think for kids... You basically, you have one thing, you stick with it. If you're trying to get a moral across, if you're just trying to entertain them for a half an hour, then sure, you can throw flashing lights and whatever at the screen. But if you're actually trying to get like a moral across, you need to have a solid, very, very basic and repetitive through line. Go back to Blue's Clues, go back to Sesame Street, all that kind of stuff. Even the Muppet Babies, when they would cut in with like uh, archival footage from movies and things like that, it was always kind of an aside. It was a distraction. It was uh, it was usually separate from. Yeah, it was like a bit. Like they'd open a was door, a and then it would be like an Indiana Jones movie, and they're like, "Oh, wrong door!" and they right. close it. So they didn't try to cram punchline. that into their their moral. It was a joke, exactly. Yeah, it was a punchline of a joke. But the rest of their shows were normally based around a, a three act structure of a problem, a difficulty with it, and then a solution to it. This show is just all over the place with it. And I, I would be surprised if any kid was like, oh, yeah, no, 100%. That's what this was about. Kevin, tell me if I'm wrong. If you learned all your morals from Salty's Lighthouse, let me know. Regarding other things that didn't work for you, Dave, what else in these episodes? I didn't like Aunt Chovy. I don't get that. There was just something about it where I'm like, if you're going to have adults elsewhere, you're going to like show them only from the knees up, then don't bring adults into the show. If you're going to have animal friends, then why couldn't, you know, why couldn't the octopus essentially be anchovy or why? I don't know. It was just weird. Couldn't an anchovy be an couldn't ant- an anch- anchovy? And that's why I was asking, like, is she actually a human or is she just the world's largest anchovy? Well, I think it's very weird, too, because anchovy is the actual owner of the lighthouse. So why isn't right. this called anchovy's lighthouse? That, too. That Maybe she willed it to Salty. <laughs> that frustrates me. Just put it in her will, docu-signed it, sent it off. It was just I, like, you have power of attorney over me. I, I, think, I think my issue with Aunt Chovy was she was just the thing that you write into the show to patch up everything else that you haven't done correctly. Mm. So she was just kind of like, well, mm, these seagulls can't fly. This tugboat can't tug. Let's bring Aunt Chovy <laughs> in to like shore up the moral, and then we can end it there with a little dance routine. Ugh. As like a Miss Frizzle type, she was fine. Yeah. It just felt like, I don't know. Uh, it was just, she was just, You were just waiting for Aunt Chovy to show up and explain what was supposed to be going on. Right. Yeah. Right. It's very hard. I just, I liked, I liked her in sort of that magical presence. It felt like she kind of had the ability to sort of do a lot of stuff. But I also understand what you're saying about, it felt like she was kind of in there to sort of like wrap up loose ends and kind of like refocus the show and then transition to another boat-faced, boat-faced killer. A boat face nightmare. But yeah. That's basically exactly what happens in the second segment. They're waiting for her to show up. That's the whole right. reason that we're having a discussion about being patient because yeah. she's not there because she's like making their cake or possibly rescuing a baby tiger from a tree or, or whatever. Yeah. But like, can I can I say something about just that 100%. whole sequence in general? Because sure. they're, they're trying to they're lamenting over the fact that they don't know why Aunt Chovy is late. And so right. everybody is sitting there commiserating, trying to figure out exactly where she is and what she's doing. And and Ocho, the octopus, yeah. is making some paintings. And the fun thing about this is that every time he paints something, he holds it up to his friends and yeah. he gets a little animation that's included with it. So Which is cute. 
you know, maybe she's helping a cat out of a tree. Maybe she's roasting some marshmallows. Maybe she's doing all these different things. Very fun little details that they can kind of further animate. And then everybody kind of pitches out different ideas to Ocho. And this is where it gets weird because it's like him with <laughs> this a, is an easel and a, and a paintbrush. And he's like slapping stuff on. And it just, it just sounds like this. That's how I paint. I don't know what you're painting and what your canvas is in this sense, Oh, Dave. just do it's, wait. I uh, don't want to know. Uh, <laughs> it does sound like low-key fart sounds and self-gratification noise the entire time. So it's the whole time is just like, like oh, Look, I'm man, uncomfortable it, with this if foley. It, if it comes to that foley, like I'm assuming that's what it was because... God, I hope so. The budget was so minimal on this thing. They had to cut so many corners, I'm sure. This is one of those projects where I would love to talk to like a producer and just be like, how many hundreds of dollars did you have? Because there's nothing there's nothing more than that going into these episodes. <laughs> because a third of it is from footage that existed previously from Tugs. Right. And that's the closest we got as an American audience to seeing Tugs is these <laughs> chopped up, redubbed. Yeah horrifying uh, segments I want to another like, mini Tugs third of myself it. now we can do it I, I guess we've yeah, got to buy not? the rights from Sony but other than that eh. fine no nope, we're not doing anything with it my our lawyers say we can do it with parody loss so we're fine I'll say this I don't like the phrase let's party and I know that that's interesting I uh, would have thought that you would have liked this one to be honest I don't I, I didn't mind like what actually transpired and mm-hmm. what took place I just don't love the phrase let's party. What if like Andrew WK is scre- screaming it really loud? I mean, I, I'm i I'm indifferent on okay. that one because I like right. Andrew WK. Mm-hmm. I will say I don't like let's party because I feel like it, it refers to an 80s or a 90s drug fueled uh, excursion. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, kind of like a bender scenario. Sure. I would be, I'd be way better. And I know this came out in '97, so I get it. People clearly were doing drugs when they made this show, or at least at a minimum, I hope they were tugs. Like they were definitely doing definitely drugs, doing doing tugs. tugs, drugs and tugs. <laughs> I don't like let's party. I'd be cool with like a let, like let's hang out, let's chill, let's vibe. Like I'm cool. I'm, I'm fine with all of those. But like let's party. I just. I feel like it's something you say to a kid and then it's just like it's a it's a fun kind of like dance moment where they they kind of wacky dance to something for like a second. And then you're like, OK, that was cute. And then you move on. And I just I, I don't like it. I will say that it's a phrase that I uh, who will never, ever again be younger than 36 should never say this phrase to a child. Any reason? Like if you had kids in the future and you're like, hey, kids, let's party. No, it's very much like if like Steve Buscemi walking into a school and just being like. <laughs> Greetings, fellow kids. Like, it's yep. that level of, like, you can't use Let's Party. It's it a just, little cringe to me. It's super cringe. It's real creepy. But they do use it as a, a decent song. I thought the, the Let's Party song was decent in this yeah. one. Just the song itself. I thought the Let's Party or the Let's Party song yeah. was fun. I, I even thought the the longing to fly on your own song that they had that was in there was, was kind of funny, which, I mean... All of them just seems like they are public domain America's Funniest Home Videos of Failures, which the is enjoyable. The visuals of this thing is something else. Because it's like, good luck trying to find enough footage to fit whatever theme you have <laughs> to try to teach these kids morals. Because in the first one, it, it goes with like trying to fly. Right. And then trying asking for help because things are going disastrously wrong. But then it devolves into like... Uh, boat flooding and a man well, trying like to a help a dog house. escape. It looked like a boathouse. <laughs> And then that the boathouse is is sinking, and and this isn't even bad. We're in LOL territory. It's so like we're, the boat we're is squarely the boat LOL. Is, the boat is sinking now at this point. A dog gets out, and the dog hits itself against like a storm door, and it alerts people that are in old timey like sleep caps yep. and gowns, and they're like like, like pre honeymooners stuff. Yeah, right. and then they're like they're on a bike in those same in that same garb, like rushing to save these. It just I don't. The visual reactions and the the looks that everybody gave uh, were were so comedic because I mean so much of what they were doing at that time with the vaudeville was like so right. squarely interesting and based on like clowning 
and yes, what they were doing. Yes, because it had to be so, way over exaggerated. And so everything that was in there was like visually distinct and fun to watch, and the reactions were just super hilarious because they couldn't say anything. But also a nightmare because you're pairing it with this kids show and you're trying to teach a moral and you have kind of this fun song at the same time. But you're watching like people almost drown in a comedic fashion, a dog being forced out of like a hole in a, in a boat, a chimpanzee like peeling a banana or something. I don't even know what was going on in this. It really was kind of just like this bizarre mind trip of whatever footage they had laying around. And I couldn't even tell you what happened for the Let's Party one other than like a chorus line. And some other vaguely party esque, right? Just imagery. a bunch of like, flappers and, and yeah. crazy things going, which on. which is what kids, you know, relate to. All right, all all of the weird faces and stuff like that. If if Joel and Ethan Cohen had just rolled up in the scene and been like, I don't know what they're doing. Are I don't I hope they're not an actor, but they have a visual distinct look about them, and we're going to cast them in fifteen movies right now. Yeah. I would have been a hundred percent on board with all of that. They yeah. they are that level of interesting to look at and unique facial features and, and composition that I, I just, I'm, I'm mesmerized by it. I feel like as a kid, I would have either been scared, bored, or just super confused by whatever was going on though. Cause as an adult, I was pretty much all of those things. Not fair. <laughs> yes. I'm, all, I'm sometimes all of those now just during this show. Just yes. Figuring it out. Just figuring it out as we go. What else made you laugh though from this? God. So in addition to, all of the animated portions of this, the 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 animated vignettes for for Let's Party and and Mix Signal, I felt like those were, I felt like we spent a majority of our time in tugs. We did, and and there is some because like, that's super cheap to make. You just put a camera down and you gently push one or two of the tugs forward, and physics does the rest. Oh man, that's and then that's you just great. overdub everything because <laughs> that's like not super their faces lazy. don't move. Yep, I love it. Uh, I I laughed a lot at the tug stuff like when they were trying to fix that dredger that they had there's yep. like a crane that they had that would u- be used to like move cargo like back and forth from right. like ships and stuff and uh there's this moment where we talked a little bit about zb and he is in this moment where he's trying to bite off more than he can chew and so like he's trying to prove two- himself yeah there's sunshine and ten cents <laughs> and- i love these yeah. names by these the names way are great they made me and they made me smile and laugh they for did. a lot of this. They were silly. Uh, there's this moment where they're kind of going through all of this and they're just like, hey, ZB, we need help. And he like he runs over with like the swagger of a man who showed up late to like an adult key party where he's just <laughs> like, I know what I'm doing. I <laughs> gotcha. And it is creepy, which is and what that, you want for a kid's show. Yeah, and that made me laugh st- Stupid hard in terms of what I was doing. I love the moment where ZB, again, is trying to like show himself, like prove himself. So he yeah. takes on like way more than he possibly could have. And the narrator tells you like, Sunshine and Tencent couldn't believe it when ZB cut across their bow. And I was like, that is very rude, first of all. And then later <laughs> when they showed him like losing control of all these barges as they're just like smashing into things in the harbor. I was like, he is going to get somebody killed. And yeah. I don't know why, but that like level of peril but knowing that it's shot in like a miniature like bathtub essentially just made me laugh. Just thinking that like, oh no, like the, the harbor is going to fall apart. It's like, no, it's just a waiting pool in somebody's backyard. It's fine. I will say there is a character that does not have a human face that's in tugs, which Who's is that? this megaphone that just hangs out yeah. of the side of a window. What's up that with that megaphone dude? made me laugh so hard. <laughs> For no good reason other than the fact that like every time the the way in terms of like beats and I'll try to do this like as quickly as I possibly can yeah. it is like ZB would say, hey, I'm able to do much more. I want to be able to, to tackle these things. I'm ready to do it. So he'd go and he'd have a conversation with somebody and he'd say exactly that. And then the megaphone would pop out of the window and be like, ZB, we've got another job for you. Report to the other doc. And that's how quickly paced these things were. I want something. I'm going to go tell somebody I want this. So the, again, they're like Oprah style, the secret throwing yeah, this out. voice into the, it into the world. Yeah, just right into the snug harbor. Yeah. So they're throwing these things out there. And then two seconds later, the microphone's just like, guess ZB, what? we got another one for you. Report yep. to Doc ZB. Calling you on your stuff, ZB. You ready to go? And he's like, yep, I'm here. I'm tugging. I'm ready. I'm, I'm all for it. I don't know what it was. It was the fact that uh the however they were editing it yeah it was just so snappy and so quick and like 
you're you're listening to like that three part dialogue of just like I got a thing. I'm gonna tell somebody I want a thing. Here's the megaphone. You're about to go do that thing. <laughs> there, like you are just listening to the same line yep. rephrased, th- like one line rephrased three different times. Yeah. But for some reason, to have it come out of like a megaphone that I can only imagine, as you mentioned, is in somebody's bathroom, and they're like. They're holding like a little stick behind it and they're it's moving so it ever so gently. And they're yeah. just like, hey, ZB, come here, we're here on oh, the other and they, dock. And they that... did it once for maybe 30 seconds total. And then they can reuse that shot as many times as they want because it's the same shot every time. I loved every single time they did it because yeah. it was it was such reused nonsense and it made me laugh every time. It was funny. But the thing that I think was funnier was Let's Party with Grampus. <sighs> Krampus is MVP of this entire series as far as I'm concerned. He is a 50-year-old submarine who's a freak. He loves pranks. He loves spitting in people's faces. He loves getting a rise out of people, but he's also very helpful, especially for the ladyboats. Oh, boy. Let's talk about this ladyboat. So the whole premise is that all the boats are at the dock, right, waiting for Krampus to show up. And Krampus doesn't just – I love that his name's Krampus – Grampus doesn't show up like the rest of the boats where they just, you know, they're face first into harbor. So you can see their giant gray faces just floating at you from the gloom. Grampus <laughs> rises up from the depths. So more terrifying than every other boat. But he's not there. They haven't seen him. Yeah. So what's Grampus up to other than the flashbacks of him spitting in Lord Stinkerton's face? Yeah. Well, he's he's on his way to the party. Yeah. And it turns out Lily Lightboat who is just a, mm. uh, like a tanker ship that seems like she's just a floating lighthouse. But she is dressed up, dolled up, made oh, she, up to well, the nines. she is, but she's also got a huge gash on her side. <laughs> God. And it's weird that they use that specific word for what's about to happen next because she's got a hole and she's taking on a lot of water taking real wet. a lot of water. We are the clearly only one after dark. After dark. Put the yeah. kids to bed. Yep. It's about to get real. This is the point where suddenly uh, Grampus, which I want to say as a pause mm-hmm. in the future, if I have kids and they have kids, and they're like, Sean, what do you want to be named? Not and like Paul Paul. Yeah, not nothing like that. It's 100% Grampus. I love, I wish listeners, you could see Sean's face because he looked like very just like dismissive <laughs> of like Pap or pop pop or paw paw he was like i hate him I hate nothing him. like that like <laughs> very like seriously him. looked directly at the camera was like listen <laughs> nothing like that <laughs> nothing, none of nothing that garbage all. yeah none of that childish nonsense out of my face with that stupidity it's gotta be <laughs> grampus <laughs> so, if nothing this... else good comes out of this episode that i want to stick thank you grampus so, in this moment when Lily Lightboat's like, oh no, I've got a problem. He's like, it's oh, weirdly don't worry. sexual. Yeah. Yeah. He inserts himself. I didn't see this coming. Yeah. Into the gash that's on the side of her boat and Face plugs first. her up. Just really gets in there. He's like, hold on. I know what to do. I've been yeah. around. Yeah. I've been at sea for a real long time. He, yeah. Basically, it's almost exactly what he said. And he just yeah. right in there. Just does nice. it. Can you tell me a little bit about when everybody finds him? Yeah. And well, I love, I love first that oh, before good. they even find them, because word somehow travels back. I guess they radiated yeah. in over the megaphone. Uh, word travels back to the party. And they're like, <laughs> Lily's in trouble. She's drowning. But Grampus is, is keeping her afloat. But we need to, to hurry and, and get them. So Sunshine is like a younger boat. And he hears the news and learns like, oh, well, we're going to have to temporarily like delay this party to go rescue Lily. And he's like, what about the party? <laughs> I'm like, son, this woman is about to drown. Grampus is in her gash temporarily to keep her afloat. And all you're concerned with is the party. Like, you need to come and learn life lessons. So I just love that. That Sunshine was just, like, so ready to party that he didn't even care that somebody was about to die. Cut up a whole bunch of, like, rails on the dock. He's He's ready ready to go, Sunshine. If you think about Scarface, but as a boat face. Yeah. Boat face, Scarface. I would watch that movie. I would. Yeah, I'd actually watch that movie. To see Sunshine grow up as, like, a young kid who literally worked at the docks and just had, like, climb his way through the criminal ranks of boat <laughs> criminal underworld. Can I throw something else out? Sure, please. Scarface, but Al Pacino's face is one of the boat faces from Tugs, but it can be any boat face at any given time because I'm sure they're probably limited in terms of how they can emote. That's what I want. Can I throw out another idea? Please. Face off, <laughs> but the exact same idea that you just said. <laughs> 
Damn it. Yeah. So a new face-off franchise, <laughs> swapping maybe Nick Cage's face with a boat face. <laughs> and then each one of them has to go on their adventures. Yeah, I would I watch that. I want this to happen real I'd bad. Really, I really kind of want that. That's, yeah. Oh, that's with perfect. With today's deep fake technology, we can make this happen. Um, this is so great. This is oh. good. But meanwhile, Lily is uh, barely holding on out there. So what? Oh, she's not barely holding about? on anymore because she is all plugged up with oh, Grampus. Yeah. Uh, and can you tell me a little bit, Dave, about the moment where Grampus finally is removed from yeah. Lily's? It's a real yikes. So they they end up going out to save her. They decide to bring the crane so they can they can help out. They get them all back to the harbor, back to docks, and they kind of use the crane and they lift uh, Lily up so she's safely kind of out of the water. She's not going to drown, I guess, as a boat face does. Yeah. And then they, you know, hook another crane or whatever around Grampus and pull him backwards. And he pops out of the gash and you're like, okay, cool. Everything's fine. And then it, <laughs> and it cuts to his face. His face is covered in like dripping engine oil and grease, and he is super happy. He's like yeah. thrilled. He's beaming. His fifty-year-old birthday boat face is beaming, and he loves every minute of it. And yeah. it was just a very unexpected visual after he was pulled uh, face first out of a lady boat. Very. Yep. Very weird. Didn't see just, it coming for the kids. Uh, I didn't see it coming either. Just, Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, and I guess this is even like an LOL. This was just it, like. It left me with such a weird laugh, but a sour taste in my mouth at this moment where like they all they all get into the harbor. They're all in Snowboat Harbor. Yeah. And there's a bunch of fireworks that are going off. And it, oh, it's yeah. a fun visual that they have. That there. was a good shot. Yeah. And they I like all that. show up and they're just like, Yeah, let's party. Yeah. Let's party. And they're and like Lily Lightboat has been done up. They've She's all patched her, up. She good. Yeah, repaired her hole. Like so they, they go through all of this at and then they're all sitting there and they're just like, let's party, let's party, let's party. And it's literally the saddest scene because they're all just sitting there like not doing anything in just somebody's floating. bathtub. And they're just and they're just floating. Just nobody's gently doing, rocking nobody, back and forth. Nobody's doing anything. And there was like a, a sense of joy and silliness. And I, at the same time, though, it was also like real deep cringe for me. It was, it was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. I love that Lily originally got that gash from being hit by a loose buoy. <laughs> there was something about the delivery of that line. Because she's making goo eyes at Grampus. And she's like, oh, I must have got hit by a loose buoy. It's like, <laughs> All right. Whatever your story yeah. is, lady, it doesn't matter. Grampus is in for it. Yeah. However you want to thirst trap this. Whatever That's you right. need. Oof. Grampus, man. I like Go back and just watch Grampus. He's amazing. Dave. Anything else in terms of LOLs that we have for this? I don't know, I, man. But between Grampus and just like some general kind of shade thrown at the seagulls who didn't know how to fly, uh, I think that's about it for me. Right. Well, <laughs> let's get into our recommendation. Oh, so boy. this has been recommended to us. And so we, first and foremost, we want to thank Kevin. Thanks, for Kevin. In. Thank you, Kevin. We really do appreciate it. We had a lot of fun doing this. We've we been mega silly about this. So this has been wonderful. We are going to get to the point where we can either recommend something and we can tell you why we think you should watch it and it's a good use of your time. We can also say that we don't recommend Kevin's recommendation and we can give you maybe something else that would be a better use of your time that you can go check out, that you can go see, and we can give you a justification of why we don't think it's a good use of your time. If we don't recommend something, we can go one step further, which is we can give it the Who Framed Roger Rabbit style dip. Yep, the dip. And we can dunk this cartoon and we can erase it from the annals of cartoon history. We never talk about it again in the context of this show. So we can erase a cartoon. We have that power. Our, our yeah, lawyers are giving me the thumbs up. We can 100% do that. So tonight for Kevin's recommendation, Salty's Lighthouse. Dave, how are you feeling, friend? Well, I'm definitely not going to recommend it. So that's oh out of the gate. I, okay. I know that. Yeah. Even and I'll tell you why. Even as a kids show, because you might be like, "Well, that's kind of harsh for a, a kids show." Look, man. Even <laughs> for a kids show, look. The moral has to be clear enough. It has to make sense for the kids, and it has to just be consistent so that they get the idea. I don't think that Salty's Lighthouse, with all the kind of other footage and other material that they incorporated, was ever going to have a chance at delivering anything that was like <laughs> anywhere near consistent or coherent. 
That being said, it could just be for entertainment value. I don't think it was even that entertaining for kids. With all the other stuff that was out around like 1997, this thing also looks like it was done in like 1977. It doesn't look, because they're using a lot of older footage. So, you know, stuff that's either like 70 years old or at least 10, 20 years old at that point. Other than the animation, which, to be fair, they did not put a lot of effort or (laughs) money into, to be honest. (laughs) So if you're failing on sort of the educational aspect, the sort of moral story aspect, and even the entertainment aspect, I really can't recommend it, even for kids out there. But I don't know if I'm going to dip it just yet. So what do you think? I... I'm not going to recommend this cartoon okay. either. All right. So dip is on the table. <clears throat> dip is on the table. I'm not going to recommend this. And I, I think the main reason why I, I concur with everything that you have said, I think the challenge with a show like this, where you know, as an adult viewer that they are intentionally trying to stretch the budget with a lot of public domain, uh, it just ends up being weird. And yeah. again, you know, the message and the morals that you're trying to convey, that you're trying to stress are are uber important. As an adult, yeah, I can see those. I'm not going to get them as a kid. My other challenge is, is that I feel like this should have just been called Tugs and then the spot, like, there's no reason, and a majority of this we have not talked about Salty because you don't really ever get a sense of who this character is. So for the titular character to not really be in the show that much, I think is a, is a real miss for me. I mean, we barely even talked about the fact that like the Klasky Chupo lumpy character design that they have for him. That's true. It yeah. is kind of interesting. He's almost an afterthought in this because it felt like what the intention or what the desire was, was let's just show a bunch more tugs and let's show a whole bunch of this wacky public domain footage that we have from the vaudeville era. And I, I don't know for a kid's show to have three specific things that they have that are kind of trying to all come together in one cohesive narrative to stress uh, a moral or a theme or an idea or just a better way of living your life. I just, it didn't hit for me. It didn't register. I am looking at this firmly saying, I don't want to watch any more Salty's Lighthouse. (laughs) caveat i Uh, do want to watch more tugs now that's a great point because so the rules of the dip right right if we dip it that doesn't mean that anything that has ever touched this uh, abomination if we choose to dip it it doesn't mean that those things are also dipped so if we dip salty's lighthouse that doesn't affect tugs i don't know it could be the other way around come as a package i don't think that they do because salty's lighthouse was i can't even believe that i'm saying this this is like legal speak Salty's Lighthouse was derived from Tugs. They used portions of Tugs, not the other way around. So if Tugs had come second, if it had somehow used Salty, I don't even know how that would work in in a a functional world. But like, to me, I see them as something different. I could dip Salty's Lighthouse and not affect Tugs. Okay. Because Tugs still exists in its own world. Salty had nothing to do with Tugs except they stole from it and did it poorly. (laughs) So I wouldn't penalize Tugs. Can you think of another example where that would be the case? I don't know. Maybe uh, what are some of the like a Action League now, but Action League was a, a part of not like a boom cartoon, but sort of the the other. Sure. If it was like, a, a, like an, an anthology oh yeah, cart- or a variety oh yeah, show. Yeah. If it was like a variety show. Yeah. Where something started and then had a spinoff to become a series and you okay. dip the original like branch root source material, then yeah, you would wipe out the other ones. Because you'd need to have that root. And I think we've argued this before. But to me, if it's something that's derived from an original and you kind of like cut that offshoot and and dip that, the original still kind of stays. So in other words, if we dip Salty's Lighthouse, Tugs would be fine. Thomas the Tank Engine would be fine. If we dip Tugs, Salty would be gone too. Mm. Because there is no Salty without Tugs. All right. I mean, I'll go with this ruling. I'll go with this ruling. Cartoon lawyers, let us know if we're off base. Feel free to file an appeal. Yeah. And take like it up in cartoon court. I feel like this is the point in the show where they've stopped listening. <laughs> they're, they're out. Yeah, they're, they're out. They're going to work with their associates. They gave this one to their associates. I've right. been watching Better Call Saul. <laughs> but to me, we can safely dip it without literally anything else in cartoon history being touched. I mean, are you are you trying to dip this show? I am, and I'll tell you why. Because okay. the only saving grace that I had was Grampus, of all things. <laughs> but Grampus exists in the Tugs universe, so he's fine. Okay. Grampus is fine. If we dip this, we're dipping Seymour. 
Oh, why would you do it to me? Yeah, I'm throwing these in there, buddy. Oh. I love non-talking, Seymour. Non-talking, non-talking pair of binoculars, Seymour. Hmm. He did all the heavy lifting. I wish I could buddy. throw a lifeboat to Seymour, but unfortunately, I think sacrifices must be made. Oh. Because Seymour acted as the transition kind of back to Tugs. Okay. So unfortunately, yeah, he's he's part of Salty's Lighthouse. I'm not going to save the rest of the show just for Seymour. I'm sorry, but I love you, but not you, yeah. Sean Seymour. Okay, well, fair. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and okay, Grampus. Uh, I I would dip this too. Yeah, I think it's a dip. Yeah, that's I our first dip is, in a while. It's been a first dip in a little bit. Yeah, we had some first dips dip back in, in December. So Can we have some dips back then. We had some dips back in December. <laughs> One day, and we talk about this every time, one day we will have a special dip episode where we hate ourselves and talk about every show that was dipped and maybe give it a chance to be redeemed. Probably not. But <laughs> Seymour, Seymour could make the cut. I would love it if I could just ladle into that dip and just draw Seymour out before he gets disintegrated and like just nope. put him on a shelf somewhere. You got rid of him, buddy. He's done. Kevin, <sighs> Sorry, you Seymour. have called and you have asked us to watch Salty's Lighthouse. We have done that. We have made our snap decision based off one single episode because Salty was barely in this. And yeah. in the moments that he was, didn't really contribute much at no. all. All the supporting characters we felt were way better than the titular character. There could have been some interesting things, but it felt like the emphasis was more on Tugs as opposed to Salty's. So... Thank you, Kevin, for calling in and having us check out Salty's Lighthouse. We have dipped it, which means it officially does not exist. We have, Dave is making a, a cross across his throat. We have gotten rid of all these characters. Tugs, as a note, exists. Tugs is fine. Krampus have, is we, fine. <laughs> Krampus is fine. But we have gotten rid of Salty's Lighthouse. Try again, Kevin. It's officially been dipped. Uh, we appreciate it, though. Thank you so much. If you disagree with this, I mean, what are you going to do? We're a podcast. <laughs> File an appeal. I'm telling you, we've got <laughs> yeah. forms for it. File yeah. a 61B yeah. in triplicate. Uh, if you felt that we were wrong in Salty's Lighthouse, message us and let us know what episode of Salty's Lighthouse that we should watch in That's order fair. to make that appeal to us. Kevin, you can always call in and tell us to watch another episode of Salty's Lighthouse. Honestly, we would do that. If you called in and said we were wrong, we would 100% put that in the show. <laughs> uh, I feel like we're just going to get... We're either going to get a really nice note from Kevin saying thank you for trying, or we're going to get something where he's just like, I'm never listening to this show again. And either way, we're putting are it on the correct. air. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, 100% correct. Uh, well, that's it. That is the end of Salty's Lighthouse for today. Forever. Forever. <laughs> the gravitas that we put on this. Incredible. The stakes are so high. The very high nobody. stakes. Poor Seymour. <laughs> Seymour yeah. was the best of us, but didn't make the cut. Yo, rest in peace, Seymour. Rest we're so peace, sorry, Seymour. buddy. Everybody, you heard him on this episode. Our friend Bobby Anthem. You can hear him on his paranormal podcast, In Human Experience, with his co-host Bobby Blades. You can find them on Twitter at IEXP underscore podcast. And Bobby has a solo show that is in the same stream as In Human Experience, which means you get a BOGO. You sign up and subscribe for Inhumans, which you can find anywhere podcasts are listened to. And you also get In Search of My Lost Soul. I can't recommend it enough. Bobby, national treasure. I'm also concerned about that because now that I've said it, Nick Cage might steal him in National Treasure 3. Don't so, take his face. Leave don't, it. Don't take his... Put, don't, and he doesn't don't get a boat face, face either. No, don't take nope. Bobby's... No, that's how this works. So thank you, Bobby, as always. Appreciate it. Hey, Dave, what do you got going on, buddy? Well, same old stuff, just making up my face-off fanfic oh, God. as an editor over at Collider.com. You can also chat me up on Twitter at DrClawMD. Check out my GIF work. Featuring Grampus. <laughs> I'll repost that for the weekend. Uh, and if you're the reading sort and you're super bored during quarantine, you can check out The Science of Breaking Bad from MIT Press, available wherever books are sold. What's going on with you, Sean? How you handling these pandemic times? Oh, man, uh, as always, I perform live improv comedy with a group that's called Knox. That's N-O-X exclamation point. We perform with Washington Improv Theater in the future, at some point, you can find tickets and times for shows that we do where people gather in audiences and crowds. And that's witdc.org, but not right now. You can also check out every once in a while, we do shows that are going to be streamed to YouTube through Washington Improv Theater's YouTube channel, so you can check it out there. We did one the other night. Guess what? It was probably the first time that we had done it, and there was a lot of latency. So as Melanie Harker described it, 
certain scenes felt like they were haunted by the ghosts of previous scenes, which is always a weird thing to have latency and echo appear in a live comedy show that is streamed onto YouTube. So you can find that. It's a beautiful disaster. Uh, uh, as always, uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Sean Paul Ellis. I also do a comedy podcast that is called The Bureau, which if you are a fan of Earwolf's Teacher's Lounge, The Bureau is four people from the FBI who are recording a podcast at work in the break room talking about the things that matter to them as agents of the FBI. So you can check that out. And you can also check me out on a podcast that should be coming out shortly. It is done by our friend Aviv uh, and his lovely partner, Leanne. It's called Yeah, I've Seen That, where I try to describe a movie that I have, in fact, never seen before. So get ready to see me flub my way through Citizen Kane. I'll give you a hint. I didn't know the name of the actual character. (laughs) (laughs) I need to actually go watch that film. So you can check that out anywhere that you listen to podcasts. Check out. Yeah, I've seen that, which, yeah, I haven't seen that. So enjoy that. Now we will. Want to support us? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're like the nicest person in the world. So kind of you. You can check out our Patreon page and search Saturday Morning Cartoons. Remember, that's morning with you. And you can become a contributor for pennies on the dollar. You can <laughs> donate to this. I don't know if that's the right phrase. Sure. No, we'll go with that. Yeah. For absolutely nothing, you can donate to this show and you can help support us. We really do appreciate it. Instead of Apple iTunes, which we don't get and nope. nobody actually understands, just recommend this to a friend. You know why? Because we understand friends and you guys are friends for listening all the way to the end of this episode. So we appreciate it. Recommend it to a friend. We really think that they'll like it too. Want to slide into our DMs on Twitter? Woohoo, do you? Mm. Message us at Morning Tunes. Remember, that's Morning with a U. You can check us out on IG and Facebook at Saturday Morning Cartoons. Drop us an old fashioned email. Saturday morning cartoons at gmail.com. And you can find all of these in our link tree, which is where Kevin submitted and found the phone number that we have to be able to request a show that we can no longer talk about on today's episode. So <laughs> what a wild yeah. trip it's been, Kevin. Yeah. This has been a, been a very weird journey today. As always, you can listen to us on YouTube, Apple podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, Google play, Spotify, anywhere fine podcasts are sold. Thank you guys so much for listening. We certainly do appreciate it. And I am going to go back to frustrating and fighting with seagulls outside of my house. Nice. So, yeah, perfect. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you. And we'll talk to you next week. Drugs and tugs. (laughs) Damn it. Hey, everybody. Thanks a lot for listening to Saturday Morning Cartoons. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to transform and roll out.